Welcome, in this video we're going to take a look at how to deploy LangGuardian on VMware ESX 6.5. My name is Darren Delaney from Netford. So just before I get into the installation process, I'm going to talk a little bit about switches and port groups as it's a term I'll use during the video. So within the, on a VMware server, on ESX server, there are multiple layers. You've got your virtual machines running. Just like a physical machine, they need to communicate, so they need to connect to a network switch. And you can have distributed switches or standalone switches within or standalone virtual switches. And a switch then can be divided up into port groups. Now port groups are very much like a VLAN. Um, you can take a single switch and segment it. A virtual switch can then be connected to a physical network adapter. So if you need to bridge the virtual world to the the physical world you can bridge a physical network card through and through your virtual switch, connect it to if you want and segment it out into port groups and through to your virtual machines. So users on your network will have no idea these are virtual machines that can communicate just like they were physical servers. So during the video I'm going to talk about port groups, we're going to talk about connecting physical NICs and also connecting a virtual machine to a port group and how you can access that then from your browser. The first step to get LangGuardian installed is you need to get the actual software itself. So if you go to netfor.com, click the download free trial, it brings you to this page here. And fill in your details and click on the download option. Now you're presented there's three different types of downloads, an ISO, a USB or the pre-built virtual machine. So I'd recommend ESX, go for the virtual machine, it saves you a bit of time. If you prefer uh, tweaking the hardware, changing the um, you know CPU, things like that, you can go for the ISO. But the uh, virtual machine um, is perfect if you want to deploy on ESX. So I've already downloaded this so I can cancel and move on to the next step. But just save that somewhere on your PC. Next we need to log on to our ESX host. Let's just log on here as root. And the first step is to create a port group. So to do that on the left here, go to networking, go to port groups, add a port group. So we're going to call this the monitoring group. The virtual switch here, uh, I just have one setup. Now, whatever, if you want to monitor some servers that are hosted on this ESX host and they're connected to specific vSwitch, you need to select that here. I just have one, so I'm going to select it. The security, you need to change this option from promiscuous mode to accept. Uh, promiscuous mode allows uh, pa uh, traffic capture, packet capture. So, monitoring group, vSwitch 0, promiscuous mode accept, add. So that's our vSwitch in place. Next, we can actually deploy the LangArnian OVA. So to do that, Go to create register VM, deploy a machine from OVA, OVF or OVA, give it a name, so I'm going to call it LangGuardian. Go next, or oh, select the OVA. Um, here is the one I've downloaded here, open, go next. Uh, select a file store, so I'm going to put it here, next. Now the network mappings is important, so VM network, uh, you can leave that on the the management um, switch. So that's the one, the switch that may be accessible to the physical network from your PC so you can connect to the browser on LangGuardian. The office span here, this is the one for the trap packet capture, so select the monitoring group, that's that port group we just created. Leave the other options, but this is really important here to get the order right. The VM network is the management interface, so make sure you select a port group or a switch that's accessible um, you know, to, your, well certainly your PC can access that, and the office span map or network here, that needs to go to the monitoring group we just set up. If you mix them up you won't be able to access the system from your browser. So looks good. VM network management group. Next. Um, everything here looks fine. You finish. And that machine now will deploy. So 
depending on speed here, my ESX server, that's reasonable spec. It'll take a probably less than a minute to deploy that. And the next stage in the process is we're going to assign an IP address to the Langardian. So Langardian needs the fixed IP. So while you're waiting to deploy here, just go off and get a, an IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and a DNS server that, that Langardian can use. So currently the status here, we have deployed the Langardian. We select it here and go to console. So it's booting up here. Once it's deployed, it seems to start up automatically. Um, certainly is with my version of ESX here, but if it doesn't just go in and, and start the machine, but as I said, mine has started the boot process and this takes um, probably, depending on speed and different things, it probably take a couple of minutes to, to boot up. Now what you're waiting for is a screen which um, allows you to go into the management um, CLI so we can set an IP address. Right, this is the screen I'm waiting for. So it says here to press enter to enter the management utility. And what we look for here is number six, configure network device. And we give it an IP address. So I'm going to go from 10.1.1.20. Now you don't need to give it this IP, but something on your network. So fixed IP, subnet mask 25250 is fine. Default gateway and a DNS server, which is, that's fine. That should be accessible. Return and then go to main menu. So we're finished here. Next step is to go to your browser and put in the IP, so 10.1.1.203, and it should load up the installation wizard. So just read the terms, agree. If you want to enable diagnostic feedback, that's fine, but let's switch it off at the moment. If you use a proxy, uh, you can set it here. This is for Langard, you can go to uh, our website, pull down updates. I don't, so I'll just use it blank, leave it blank. The next step here is it checks its sensor. Now the sensor is that second interface, so it's going off to see, does it see any traffic on that? Probably won't see a whole lot, sees a little bit. So we'll just finish. And now we log on. So the default password, as you can see here, it's, it's administrator. I do recommend you change that so you do that up here via the account settings. Now, I just logged on. I'm not gonna see results for approximately five minutes. Um, at that point, yeah, you should start to see the dashboards populating, or if you go to all reports, maybe applications in use, um, you should start to see some data. Oh, I'm starting to see some data here already. So if I drill down here, HTTP, I could see, well, this is the actual server itself and it may be connecting out, well, it's probably, yeah, my PC is connecting to the web front end of this. So I'm starting to capture traffic. Now remember, this is what we're do doing here is we're capturing traffic um, between VM hosts or traffic from an external client connecting to a VM host. The next video I'm gonna create is, um, now if you're on watching this on YouTube, go to our channel and you'll see it there. If you're watching this on the Nefer.com website, on the installation page, you'll see the second video, which is how to link a span or mirror port on your physical network to this uh, new Langardian virtual machine.